So what are the basic elements of electrical and mechanical system? So let's say the fundamental terminologies or fundamental elements or I will say the fundamental components of an electrical system are nothing but a resistor, a capacitor and an inductor, right? So similarly, a mechanical system can be also realized by a spring, all those components which are having some typical kind of a behavior that may be called as a spring or they, they may exhibit some kind of a spring behavior, a mass and a friction component or a damper component. So these are three fundamental mechanical engineering components or elements and resistor, capacitor and inductor are very fundamental electrical engineering components. So this actual elements are very useful in building any such larger system. So this inductor, capacitor and resistor may represent a circuit of a radio transmitter or it can represent a circuit of a FM receiver, right? Or it may represent a circuit of an antenna. So a resistor, inductor and capacitor are three building blocks of electrical and electronic systems while spring mass and damper are very fundamental mechanical blocks. So these are the three systems. Now if we want to let's say start modeling about a register right. So let's take up a symbol of a register and uh, let me give you some brief idea about uh, electrical system. So if you apply some potential difference this is called uh, voltage uh, between two terminals and if there is a potential difference connected across any of this element or a group of this element the current is going to flow according to their behavior so voltage and current are one such system and similarly here you have the force and velocity right so force and velocity are uh, let's say two mechanical engineering phenomena uh, voltage and current are electrical engineering phenomena. Now, let's try to have some mathematics of uh, all these elements, right? So, let's say I want to model the effect of a resistor when some voltage is applied across it, right? So, I'm going to connect a DC supply source over here and I'm going to make the circuit closed. So, this is the V voltage R ohms of resistance is connected between these two terminals and current I is going to flow from positive battery terminal or positive DC voltage terminal to the negative DC voltage terminal. Now from the fundamental laws like the ohms law right you can decide what is the relationship of voltage and current and the resistor. So resistance is such a phenomena or uh, such a parameter or an element in electrical engineering which is going to make the voltage across this device which is proportional to the current flowing through this and that constant of proportionality is replaced as R value. So the voltage across this resistor is I times R and this is a very fundamental Ohm's law or we can say this ratio of voltage and current remains constant, right? So you might have done a very fundamental experiment in your laboratory in a school where you have a resistor and you change this voltage, you have a variable DC voltage source and an emitter connected in the circuit, right? For example, like this. And this emitter will help you to read out the current value. And if you keep on taking the ratio of the voltage and current, it is going to be remaining almost constant, right? So for a constant value of a resistor, if you do this reading where it's voltage V1, then you apply a slightly higher voltage V2, you go with the voltage V3 and you have a corresponding current I1, I2 and I3. And if you take this ratio V1 by I1, V2 by I2, V3 by I3, they are all going to represent almost constant value, which is the resistance R. Now, provided that due to the current, the temperature of the resistor remains same. 
right so the temperature parameter of this resistor remains same then the ohms law holds true let's take a similar mechanical engineering example so let's say this is a surface and on this surface we have some object kept of mass m and if you apply some force f in this direction it is going to get accelerated with some value and that fundamental equation can be represented as f equals to mass m into acceleration a so this is a very fundamental newton's law where it is applied to the mass kind of a fundamental element related to mechanical engineering so now if i want to write this simple equation in terms of the position right and uh, let's say a velocity so we have a equals to dv by dt v stands for velocity this is going to be simple like rate of change of velocity with reference to time and if we do the change in the position of the object right how much is going to be the change in the position of this object in this direction that can be represented as d square x by dt square where x represents the position variable so this is going to be a differential equation of second order and the similar equations are available in electrical engineering for an inductor as well now instead of using all these equations and making the effect of the temperature or let's say making uh, the friction uh, where it is present with this surface and the object we can actually model all this equation in a block diagram way right so instead of writing all these equations if we have a block of a resistor along with this symbol it will be very easy for us to visualize and understand what this system is about right so the simulink offers such blocks or such symbols where you have the resistor implemented in terms of its resistance value along with uh, let's say for example you want to implement some temperature effects or all the inductors and capacitors along with let's say some initial conditions so these are the fundamental elements and you will find all these blocks in a similar environment which are exactly like their symbols so this is a symbol of a capacitor let's say this is a symbol of an inductor and this all readily available blocks will help you to simulate an RLC circuit. So, for example, you want to start your filter design and you want to see the effect of applying this small DC voltage to the RLC series circuit. You can actually connect a circuit like this and you can make a model of an electrical circuit. At the same time, you can make the model of a mechanical arrangement as well. So, for example, if you have a suspension system, it can be represented by a spring mass and damper and you can have uh, a detailed mathematical model of a suspension system using this fundamental mechanical blocks. Now, with this, let's now move on to the Simulink environment. So, what is a Simulink environment? So, a Simulink environment is going to be a block diagram environment and let's say we want to make a fundamental use case of a pump right so we want to analyze or we are interested in uh, doing a simulation or doing some experiments or try to understand or learn about the behavior of the pumps how we are going to do it we can make a block of a power supply and why do we require a power supply uh, basically the pump is going to be motor driven and this motor will require some power supply so this motor has to be also controlled so let's say we have a motor drive system or a motor along with its controller and on the shaft of the motor you have a pump connector and yes obviously there are some pipings over here right uh, there may be some uh, user inputs over here and there may be some uh, electrical protection related circuits at the power supply input over here but you want to create such a setup which is as real as a pump so this is the arrangement of a pump along with a motor drive right so this is a motor driver box and here is what you see a motor in a green color and this is what is a pump now what you need to do is you need to connect some uh, piping over here from this part right now 
we want to learn about such a system where it's electromechanical or a motorized system so we can actually simulate the full system where we not only have the three phase electrical supply or three sine waves uh, 120 degree apart from each other but you can also implement what is the type of the control what are the user inputs over here and what is the type of the motor let's say this is a simple dc shunt motor and let's say there is a gear ratio over here between the motor shaft and the pump and this motor is controlled to control the flow rate in these pipes so the entire setup can be visualized or we can make it in a simulink environment so simulink environment is basically a graphical environment where you will have all such blocks which will represent the graphics so let's say for example if i want to have a single phase source i'm going to have a block called a sine wave or a single phase supply and it will look like this so all the symbolic representations are going to be there in mechanical engineering uh, let's say if this is going to be a gearbox and there will be a similar system which represents the driven shaft and the driving shaft like this so this may be a representation of a simple gear system so a graphical environment is going to help the user understand about what exactly this symbol represents so it's a graphical user interface in the back end or let's say in the background how the simulation is going to work that also we will be studying so here it's a single phase sine wave and what you can do is you can configure for this value and frequency so you can assign phase frequency and amplitude and if it is a gearbox you can assign uh, let's say the losses happening in a gearbox or the gear ratio so this is going to be a graphical user interface where you click on this block and configure these parameters and simply once you have done the configuration you close the configuration window and simply hit the run button and this sine wave is produced and given to the external circuit so this is how simulink is going to work so what are the blocks going to represent simulink is going to have many number of blocks and all the blocks will be representing either of this three or four systems so they may represent the entire physical system or it may be a part of a subsystem it may either represent the signals or it may represent the mathematical function so you may have some block representing the physical signals like the velocity or like uh, it may be angular velocity or linear velocity or it can be the voltage and current which are physical signals this blocks in a simulink may be of a subsystem which will eventually form a larger system or it can be a simple mathematical functions similar to what we have seen as the add block so this simulink blocks are going to be representing various types and uh, ultimately they are nothing but some sort of equations in the background and in the gui ca case you just have to configure them right so let's say this is a single phase source and this is going to be a mathematical function of sine omega t plus phi so where you have to assign some peak value let's say a you have to assign the frequency and you can add it or it can be a plus or minus system it can be a phase so this a is going to represent an amplitude and this equation will be implemented in the background to simulate the sine wave so this is about the simulink environment so now let's discuss about the pump application a bit more in detail so what is a pump application so the pump application involves uh, both the system which is electrical and mechanical right and it may be involving the hydraulics or it may be involving the protection from the electrical side so a pump application is going to have an electrical supply which may be a single phase or three phase 
Now this electrical supply is going to be of fixed voltage and fixed frequency and if your motor is going to be DC you will be required to convert AC into DC or some sort of converter or a controller is required in between the electrical supply and the motor. So electrical supply and the motor is going to form all together a electrical system. Now on the shaft of the motor what you may have is some gear ratio with a gearbox and a pump. So the G block and the P block represents the gearbox and the pump. Now you want to simulate what happens when we give single phase 50 hertz 230 volt RMS supply to a DC motor with an AC to DC converter and where the pumping flow rate requirement is x amount of liters per minute so in let's say one minute this much amount of liter of water is being pumped right so this is your uh, flow rate requirement and uh, you may convert those flow rate requirements into the motor speed and torque requirements and you may be interested to analyze how much is the energy flow so what is going to be the energy flow if the AC to DC converter efficiency is efficiency 1, the motor efficiency is going to be the another set of efficiency 2, the gearbox is having another efficiency, efficiency 3 and efficiency 4, right. So if you model all these parameters in detail and you want to find out how much is the energy consumption, you can actually put some measurement device on the input side of a supply and you can realize what's happening inside. So this is a pump application and you can make a MATLAB model which will be exactly replicating this situation and you may actually try with the built-in model of a DC motor or an AC motor. In case of an AC motor if you want to uh, convert this into fixed voltage fixed frequency AC to variable voltage variable frequency AC or you may wish to try some different kind of gearbox or you may wish to try some different configuration of pump. So all this is possible in a Simulink environment and it's going to be very quick. So you can analyze and study your system using Simulink starting from its beginning to the end. So the full system can be analyzed like this. Now you may have some questions related to is the mathematical model same as actual system or the actual model. So if you see this image right uh, this is the actually a render image or let's say a 3D model which uh, was created by the civil engineers or, or the architectures and this was the fundamental concept and when they created the building or this is going to be a 3D concept kind of a building and this is going to be a real one. Now the concept may be something different and the real might have some different behavior. Right. So the answer of this question whether the mathematical model represents the actual behavior of the system. The answer is both yes and no. So it may be almost similar or may be exactly similar. Right. So for example an electrical engineer wish to try to understand the behavior of a resistor along with the change in the temperature. Right. So this is a resistor and you have the set of values of temperature T1, T2 and T3. And for all these three values you want to have the different values R1, R2 and R3. And you want to model or you want to understand what exactly happens when you apply uh, some hundred of voltage to this resistor. Now when you do this experiment in reality it may be exit or it may be having some errors. Now what are the parameters? What What is going to decide whether the mathematical model which we created is going to be accurate or not? So there are many parameters and it depends on the level of the model right or it depends on 
uh, how deep is the modeling exercise done right and that is the another term is called a fidelity or let's say the quality or the degree of the model which is used so the accuracy or the nearness to the reality represents the model level so accuracy and dynamics are based on the assumptions and one model may be accurate in one case but may not be in other case let's say for example this building uh, is from the look point of view is similar from the loading point of view let's say all these buildings are going to have certain amount of load applied and that may be also matching but when it comes to let's say earthquake test or a dynamic test this model is not going to have sufficient details right so one model may be accurate in one case but it may not be accurate in other case so what are the difference between mathematical model and the real system so what are the factors affecting this right so all those assumptions when you made while creating the model all those initial conditions and all those actual environmental and other effects so if you consider all this real systems your model may be as real as the actual system so if you consider all real world inputs right where it's all is very important and the real world inputs so if your model is taking care of all real world inputs and its behavior then you can model your system perfectly so how does it work so how do you actually create a mathematical model so mathematical models are created with this exercise so first uh, you do a physical experiment or you do a practical right and from the practical you decide about the governing equation or a theory let's say for example a simple ohms law where the voltage across the resistor is proportional to the current passing through it right so this is a physical experiment and from that experiments the scientists have decided or scientists have come up with the governing equations which are called theory now all these theoretical equations are solved in a graphical environment like a simulink and the mathematical model is created for a simulation right so this is the way how it works right so what kind of governing equations what kind of uh, inputs right you are taking on what level of uh, equations you are implementing for a mathematical model that will decide the fidelity or degree of or nearness of your mathematical model so i hope uh, you will be now clear about the question whether the mathematical model are real or fictitious so in some cases it's very difficult to realize them in terms of the mathematical modeling in that case what you are going to do is you you take the actual practical data from your experiment and you feed the data to your model right in in that case your simulation is going to be perfectly represent your real system so it's now the time to have a look at the simulink so let's go to the matlab and let's have a first look how does the simulink look like 